Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we've built a home lab server using K3S and exposed applications to the internet with Cloud3D. But what if you want to expose services inside your local network? That's where Metal LP and external DNS come into play. In this video, we'll use Metal LP to allocate IPs for local services and automate DNS updates with external DNS. To demo those concepts, we'll expose PyHole DNS and Visual Studio Code to our local network. My name is Philip. Let's dive in. Let's start by talking about architecture. We have a flat network using the 192.168.10/24 range, meaning we have 254 usable IP addresses. This setup keeps things simple, making it beginner friendly. You don't need to reconfigure your network or have devices that support VLANs. However, a better and more structured approach would be to allocate a dedicated network or VLAN for Kubernetes services, improving isolation and security. In our current setup, we have a MicroTIG router, which provides access to other local networks and the internet, while also handling DHCP and DNS. Then we have a K3S home lab server, which will host our application and the client machine for accessing and managing services. The remaining IP addresses are unallocated for now. A few things to note. By default, a K3S installation uses only a single IP. That works fine. After all, K3S comes with traffic and ingress controller acting as a reverse proxy. When someone connects to the K3S IP, traffic checks the HTTP host header and routes the request to the appropriate application. But what if you need a second ingress controller, like Nginx alongside traffic? Ports 80 and 443 are already in use, so you'd need another IP address. Or what if your application doesn't use HTTPS? For example, it's a DNS server or an SFTP server. That's where Metal LB comes in. It lets you assign dedicated IPs to each service, making your setup more flexible. If you want a deep dive into how Metal LB works under the hood, check out my video on that topic. If you want to follow along, all commands and configuration files are available in the GitHub repo linked to the video description. First, let's set up K3S Kubernetes by running the installation script. We are adding three key parameters. Cluster CIDR defines the IP range for pods. Service CIDR defines the IP range for services. Disable Service LB disables the built-in service load balancer, which is important because it conflicts with Metal LB. Once the installation completes, we need to copy the K3S configuration files to the default location so that Kubernetes tools can use it. Now let's launch K9S, a powerful terminal-based UI for managing Kubernetes. If you are unfamiliar with K9S, I have a separate video covering it in detail. In K9S, you can type colon svc to list all Kubernetes services. Notice that the traffic ingress service doesn't have an external IP assigned. That's because we disabled service LB, which K3S enables by default. Instead, we'll use Metal LB to handle load balancer services, giving us more control over IP assignment. To install Metal LB, let's apply its official manifest file. Metal LB requires two configuration resources, an IP address pool, and a layer to advertisement. First, we need to create an IP address pool to define a range of IP addresses that Metal LB can assign to load balancer services. Our local network only has three active IPs, one for the router, one for the K3S node, and one for the client machine. To keep things organized, we are carving out the 10.100 to 10.199 range specifically for services exposed via load balancer. This ensures that Metal LB can dynamically assign IPs. If you are using a flat network where clients and services share the same subnet, make sure to exclude Metal LB's IP range from your DHCP server to prevent conflicts. 
In my setup, the DHCP server only assigns IPs from 10.1 to 10.99, ensuring that the 10.100 to 10.199 range is reserved for load balancer services. To summarize, 10.1 to 10.99 is DHCP pool for client devices. 10.100 to 10.199 is reserved for load balancer services exposed via Metal LB. And IPs above 10.200 are for static allocation, like the router or K3S server. Now let's apply the IP address pool configuration. Next, we need to configure layer 2 mode, which allows Metal LB to announce IPs by sending ARB requests. This is simpler than BGP, doesn't require additional network hardware, and it's perfect for home labs. Here's the configuration. Let's apply it. With Metal LB fully configured, let's check if it's working. We'll list our services in K3S. Everything is set up correctly. You'll notice that traffic now has an external IP address assigned. This is the first IP from the address pool we defined earlier, confirming that Metal LB is correctly handling load balancer services. Let's put our load balancer setup to test by installing Pyhole. Pyhole is a great candidate because it's a non-HTTP service that requires both TCP and UDP ports, making it a perfect use case for Metal LB. Remember, the default Kubernetes ingress only supports HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So, for services like DNS, which rely on both TCP and UDP, a load balancer service is required. To be precise, there are options like traffic TCP or UDP routers, or node port service, but in this video we are focusing on using a load balancer service. First, let's create a dedicated namespace for Pyhole. Since Pyhole needs to store its DNS settings, block lists and logs, we need to create persistent volume claim. Now, let's check out the deployment manifest. The deployment is fairly straightforward, just a basic configuration. Let's apply it. Now comes the most interesting part, exposing Pyhole to the local network using Metal LB. We define two load balancer services, a TCP service exposing port 80 TCP for the Pyhole admin dashboard and port 53 TCP for DNS queries that exceed the size limit of UDP packets. Then there's a UDP service exposing port 53 UDP for standard DNS resolution. To ensure both services share the same external IP, we use the allow shared IP annotation with a common key. This tells Metal LB to assign the same IP address to both the TCP and UDP services. Basically, if two services are pointing to the same pods and have the same key, they will be given the same IP address. Let's apply the manifest. Now, let's check if Pyhole was assigned an external IP. Do you see that? Both our TCP and UDP services share the same IP address, exposing Pyhole to the local network. Let's open the Pyhole admin dashboard from a client machine. OK, we are in. I will go to Settings, then DNS, and select Permit All Origins. So, Pyhole DNS accepts traffic from any IP on our local network. Now, let me click Save. Next, let's verify that Pyhole DNS is working correctly by querying it for Google.com. Success! Our Pyhole DNS is resolving queries, confirming that our load balancer setup works flawlessly. At this point, we have a fully functional Kubernetes-based DNS service, dynamically allocated from our local subnet whenever we create a load balancer service. How cool is that? Accessing services via their IP address isn't the most convenient approach. One option is to manually add a DNS entry for Pyhole on our MicroTIG router, which serves as our local DNS server. That would work, but what if I told you there's an even easier way? External DNS, a powerful tool that automatically updates DNS records whenever a load balancer service is created or removed. This means you don't have to manually manage DNS entries. It's all handled for you. In this video, I will show you how to set up external DNS with a MicroTIG router, but keep in mind that it supports multiple DNS providers like Google DNS, Cloudflare, AWS Route 53, and others. 
Let's start by enabling HTTP access on the router so that external DNS can securely connect to it. First, I will SSH into the router. Next, we need to create a certificate authority certificate. To do this, I will navigate to the certificates menu. Now I will create the CA certificate. I will name it CA cert, set the common name to Microtik, make it valid for 10 years, and ensure that it can sign other certificates and certificate revocation lists. Once the CA certificate is created, we'll self-sign it. Next, I will create a new certificate for HTTPS access. This one will also be valid for 10 years. Then we'll sign it with our CA certificate. The next step is to enable HTTPS access on the router. I will turn on the www SSL service. Finally, I will assign the newly created HTTPS certificate to the www SSL service to secure the connection. Last thing to do is create a user with write permissions so that external DNS can authenticate. And that's it. Our router access is now configured with HTTPS ready for external DNS integration. Let's move to installing external DNS that will manage DNS records dynamically. The first step is to create a dedicated namespace for it. Next, we'll create a Kubernetes secret to store the Microtik connection information, including the URL, username, and password. Since Microtik uses a self-signed certificate, we'll skip the TLS verification. Let's apply the manifest file. Now, I will install external DNS using the Helm package manager. I will start by downloading the Helm installation script, then make the script executable, and run it. Now we'll add the external DNS Helm chart repository to the Helm client. Next, let's refresh the Helm chart repository. A Helm chart is a package for deploying application in Kubernetes. It's similar to a software package like DEP or RPM, but designs for Kubernetes. Helm charts allow for customizable deployments via configuration files rather than hard coding settings into Kubernetes manifests. Here's an example configuration for Microtik. It contains the necessary configuration for external DNS. Let's install external DNS using Helm, passing in the configuration file. And that's it. External DNS is now up and running. Let me demonstrate how external DNS works in action. I've updated the PyHole service manifest with two key annotations. The first annotation specifies the host name for this load balancer service. The second annotation defines the time to leave for the DNS entry. Let's apply the updated manifest. Now, here's the magic. I can use the domain to access the PyHole service. What just happened? The external DNS add-on automatically updated the DNS server on my home router, adding the pyhole.lab.local entry. Let's list the DNS entries on my home router to verify. Here's the A record for the PyHole application. Now, if I decide to delete the PyHole service, you'll notice that external DNS will automatically remove the DNS record, ensuring that our local DNS stays clean and up to date. Just to sum up, whenever we expose an application via a load balancer service, Metal LB allocates a new IP address from the address pool. If we include the hostname annotation, external DNS automatically updates the DNS with an A record pointing to that service. Now that we covered the load balancer service type, let's move on to exposing an application via ingress. Fortunately, external DNS also supports this scenario. To demonstrate, I will expose Code Server, a browser-based Visual Studio Code editor, which is a great example of an HTTP service that can be exposed via ingress. We'll start by creating a namespace for the Code Server. Next, we need a persistent volume claim to store Code Server data. Now let's deploy Code Server with the following manifest. Let's now examine the service configuration. This manifest includes a traffic ingress rules that directs requests with the host name code.lab.local to the code server service. The service in turn selects all the pods labeled with code-server. 
we also have the external DNS annotation to define the DNS record name. Let's apply the manifest. Now, I will go to my client PC and enter the newly created domain. And just like that, our Visual Studio Code environment is now accessible via the web browser. Let's check the DNS entry on the router. As expected, the A record for the code.lab.local domain has been created, and it points to the ingress IP. And that's it for today. With Metal LB, you learn how to easily allocate new IP addresses from your home network, and with external DNS add-on, DNS records are automatically updated for you. Super convenient for a dynamic home lab setup. In the upcoming videos, I'd like to dive into securing your communication with TLS, walk you through using CERN Manager, set up a multi-node K3S cluster, talk about storage, and explore some of the powerful features of Traffic Ingress Controller. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.